We have um, Hall. And then we have different um, delays over here, a coursing effect. There's different kind of effects that you can use with this mixing board. And, um, you know, so if you want to just have something, typically vocals are going to get reverb. So you would have the effects going. And um, depending on how much you want of the effects, you know, I, for, for vocals, I would just put this at zero. And then you control how much effects is coming out of this mixing board's main outputs with the effects slider. Um, and, and it's called a mixing board because what you're hearing through your monitors, and that could be stage speakers, um, that could be a recording studio speakers, that could be your headphones. Um, all that depends on, you know, like each channel. So if somebody's talk, let's say you were recording a podcast and you had four people. Well, if somebody's speaking louder than the next person, you're going to want to adjust primarily the gain. But then it's maybe a little bit easier to just lower their fader. By the way, on a mixing board like this, again, because it's an affordably placed price mixing board, I would not recommend going above zero you always want to attenuate or lower the fader. And so if you need to boost something, boost it with the gain, lower it with the fader, because uh, attenuation is easier done with cheaper analog circuitry than boosting is. Um, and then we come down here. Now this controls where, how much essentially the signal is in the, the difference between the left and the right channels. So, for example, if I had a pair of rhythm guitars on, we'll do um, inputs five and six. How about that? So we come down to five and six. And now what I would probably do down here, I would actually put a label. So I know what, what, you know, what instruments are on which channel. So five and six, let's pot these up, these sliders. Don't go past zero. <laughs> and I would actually go left, all the way left, all the way right. And let's see, another thing that gets stereo spread. Mm, in a recording scenario, drum overheads. So in that case, if I were doing this live, I'd probably just put them not all the way to the left, not all the way to the right. Maybe I would do it just, you know, like that. You know, about, you know, at the 9 o'clock position. So if you ever look at an analog clock, do I have one around here? Uh, well, I do actually. Hold on. Okay. So there's your analog clock. So 9 o'clock is on the farthest left, three o'clock is on the farthest right, six o'clock is uh, south, and uh, 12 o'clock is like your zero position on the mixing board. Okay, so let's come back over here. So on a pan knob, we, we talk in terms of the analog face. So at the center knob position, that's 12 o'clock. All the way down, that's like what would that be like the seven o'clock position? Yeah, let's just call it seven o'clock. And then this would be the five o'clock position. And like I said, three o'clock and nine o'clock. Okay, what else? Oh, okay, let's talk about the outputs. So, first of all, we have RCA, which I don't have one of those kind of cables here. RCA, um, if you ever seen the back of an old TV, they have um, a white and red connector. And that's what we have here as well. Um, so some people still have an RCA output or input. And so those come in handy when you need that. But, um, you know, it's good that they have RCA input and output. I'll, I'll just put it that way. Um, and I believe there's a way to control that down here. 
or at least I thought there was. Maybe there's not. Um, anyway, the dog's asking to let be let in. Hold on. Okay. So again, outputs. Now this right here, I would say, is your most important. Now typically these are actually on the back of a recording console, but on here, they're like right here. So what you do, just like a microphone output, you use the, um, this is called the female end, the XLR F end. So what you want to do, again, you align the prongs. And this one's really easy because all you have to do, you see that little slot on the cable? You just line that up with the slot on here and you get it every single time. And make sure it clicks into place because that is the beauty of the XLR F connector. There's always a, or uh, unless the, the thing's broke, um, there's always a lock. Um, and if I had another XLR cable, I'd plug it in this one. And these would go to your, if you were recording, they would go to your XLR inputs on your audio interface. Or if you were doing this live somewhere, it would go to the PA system. So that's your main outputs. The volume of those are controlled by this down here. Usually these are this is labeled like main left, main right. But um, you know, it's it's a red not it's a red slider, so it's kind of easy to to remember that. And let's see. Next up, okay, I already talked about the effect sends. And now there's something also called a return. So if you do send out the effects to let's say a compressor, it then comes back in through this um, quarter inch. I don't know if this is balanced or not. Typically they aren't. So we'll just say unbalanced uh, line input. Again, phone, quarter inch phone cable. Like that. And then we also have, again, the auxiliary number one. It says monitors, but it can be anything. Uh, phones, this is actually where we get the headphones involved here. Let's see. So again, we have a quarter inch phone cable. Um, would be balanced, but it needs to have two outputs. So we're just going to plug that in right there. And you can imagine that when you start to have some, some things plugged in it, it, it gets kind of it gets kind of cable-y, you know. So that's why, like, a lot of mixing boards have a lot have these outputs on the on the rear panel, but on this one, everything's up here. Again, when you know when when you're saving money, that's where the savings come into play. So you know, it's going to get a little cable-y right here. Um, here, I'll, I'll plug some other things in uh, just just to show you guys what I'm talking about. So um, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll plug this one in. And just to be funny, now don't actually do this. Or maybe I should, you know what, I'm not going to do this. Because that might, that might be bad. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to actually, that, that's enough cables right there. You guys, you guys get the idea. But um, down here is where we choose our different, what, what they're called effects programs. So with this knob right here. I'll go through the different programs and you're really just listening like what your favorite ones are and you can go really fast if you want and then once it gets to 256 you go up and you're back at number one and, and that's cool that it has a built-in effects or delay unit um, let's see you can also press that in and then that when you're going through it it saves that as the current input mp3 program the cool thing about this mixing board is it actually has bluetooth and a usb input so you can and there goes the dog so you can get background music plugged right into this either wirelessly or with a usb um, thumb drive now unfortunately 
You, you got to double check with how you format your USB thumb drives. I do not believe this supports certain file formats. Um, I believe XFAT32, I'm sorry, not XFAT, uh, FAT32 is supported. And I don't think NTFS is. XFAT may be supported. Um, okay, another thing. Phantom power. See how it says 48 volts? So some microphones, particularly condenser microphones, will require electrical voltage on the actual uh, microphone cable. So in order to enable that, you press this button right here. And what I like to do is actually, I press that usually without with these sliders down, because you see how that when I hit that, it like the, it made like a little, it, it showed up on the meter. And I'm gonna, I'll press it again so you can see it. Okay, so actually it didn't do anything that time. Uh, I'll, I'll let it die down for a second. Anyway. On this, this is our controls for our outputs now. So on the effects send, we can set this. Let's just set it to zero, and there's no indent on this, so you kind of just got to judge it. Um, monitor send, the same thing. So this is different from the individual auxiliary sends. So you're controlling ind individual channels here, but now this is the this is the overall send level that's going to come out of these two auxiliary sends. Um, now, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way to just make this 